I'm wearing something called a pechi cap. It's a hat that I picked up as a souvenir on a recent trip to Indonesia. It looks pretty Islamic. It has uh, no peak on it. In uh, neighboring Malaysia or in the Philippines, it tends to indicate um, that one is either a particularly observant Muslim or, uh, as in the case of the Philippines, a Muslim cleric or even a Muslim insurgent in the southern island of Mindanao. In Indonesia, however, where this hat was first popularized by President Sukarno, this hat has quite different connotations. Indonesia is a country that is the world's largest Islamic country, the world's largest Islamic population. But Indonesia's Muslims, 200 million strong, are just about evenly split between the quite religious and conservative Muslims and the quite irreligious and secular Muslims. And like, say, a country like Turkey, um, they don't necessarily get along all that well, but they understand the necessity of trying to work together for the greater good. And again, like Turkey, when an Indonesian says that he's a secular, he means it. And he's willing to, if, if he feels threatened, to use force to resist the forces of Islamism or religion, religious fundamentalism in general. Now, the reason why I bring that hat into this is when I see Pat Condell raving against Islam, I see somebody who may potentially be an inciter to disorder in my society. It's all very well to be an atheist, and I have no problem with atheists at all, although I don't count myself in the, among them. I feel the same way about religious people. I, there's, there's, I have no problem at all with someone being quite religious. But keep the aggression and the fanaticism out of both atheism and religion. Thank you very much. In Indonesia, uh, if you ask the average Indonesian what he thinks of a Wahhabist or uh, a very strict and um, fire and brimstone type Muslim, he's probably going to go, and probably this guy is a little bit on the dangerous side because, well, we did have the Bali bombings after all, and that's the kind of Muslims these people were. You ask the same fellow what he thinks of an atheist, and he goes, oh, atheists? Oh, they, they, they're they troublemakers as well. They they blow up mosques, and they, they the Indonesians have memories of almost, or they believe that the, the, a communist insurgency almost took over that they believed would have abolished religion forcibly in their society, uh, in the same way that, say, the Khmer Rouge would have done, or they believe would have done, um, had they taken power in Indonesia. So... When I see either side getting too aggressive, I like to think that there is such a thing as a sane position that avoids both polarities. I uh, am a lapsed Catholic. I, at uh, some formative period in my early teens, I rebelled strongly, or I actually didn't really rebel in as much as I just sort of slipped away from it. I said, this is uh, something I can't accept anymore. In fact, at the time, I would have told you that I thought it was a, a menace to civilization, that Roman Catholicism or, you know, was, was a bad thing. I still sometimes think that way. <clears throat> but this led me to sort of think, okay, maybe the Protestants have something um, interesting to say. Maybe their Christianity is better than my Catholic Christianity, but I soon found out that they had different issues, but they had issues nonetheless. Um, and uh, you stumble across a fellow by the name of Ian Paisley or any other um, of that type of Protestant, and all they ever do is rail against the evils of Catholicism, against popery, against Rome, against... Uh, uh, all this sort of thing, which I suppose at the time I probably would have agreed with, but they did so with such venom that that pretty much did it for me in terms of becoming a Protestant, and it led me to a position where I just don't, I'm irreligious, um, but I'm not anti-religious. If anyone wants to be a very strict religious person of any shape, of any type of religion, that's perfectly okay with me. I don't see anything wrong with that. If someone wants to be irreligious, I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, 
But I don't believe that either side should be in the business of defaming, abusing, attacking, or otherwise um, smearing or provoking the other. That's disharmony. That's uh, a recipe for the sort of clash that countries like Indonesia and Turkey are desperate to avoid. I'm always talking about how much I like the Southeast Asian mindset, and one of the things that the Southeast Asians tend to harp on a lot more than we do is this idea of avoiding offense. It can be infuriating because the average Southeast Asian often will tell you what he believes that you want to hear rather than what he actually thinks. So it can, for, for a Western practical thinker, it's it can be even infuriating because you're trying to communicate with someone and it looks like he's trying to deceive you, but he's not. He's trying to avoid offense. That, if you ask me, comes out in the Indonesian use of the pechi cap. It's a proper Muslim hat, but what it actually means is secular nationalism as opposed to religious fanaticism. A completely irreligious Indonesian could just as easily wear this hat and it wouldn't be a contradiction. I think that's what we should do as a society in dealing with the atheism versus religion issue. Each position, if you ask me, is legitimate. The problem is the conflict between the two itself. It's not the positions. It's the disharmony. It's the loss of balance in the relationship. It's the loss of respect. That's why I think Pat Condell has gone over into sectarianism. And sectarianism, as we all know, can get very, very ugly. Thank you.